Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the House of Law and I'm Attorney Aljumani. So in this video, I'm going to ask a very simple question. A question which I should have asked when I started this vlog. And that is, what is law? Tara, usap tayo. So what is law? Ano nga ba ang batas? And how important or how relevant is it to our lives? Well, you may have taken it for granted or maybe you have not noticed it at all. Pero everything that we do is actually affected by law. Sa lahat ng ginagawa natin may batas. Either they directly affect us or not. There are laws that cover or affect almost everything that our life touches our relationships, our properties, our work, our relation with the state, lahat yan, no, sakop ng batas. So kaya, una natin tanong ay, ano nga ba ang batas or what is law? Well, law is generally defined as a rule of conduct, just and obligatory, promulgated by legitimate authority, and for the common observance and benefit. Okay, so in this uh, definition, we can immediately see the important elements or requisites of law. And una, it is a rule of conduct. Second, it is just. Third, it is obligatory. Fourth, it is promulgated by legitimate authority. And fifth, it is for the common observance and benefit. So, let us understand the law by asking these questions. Why is it a rule of conduct? What does the law do? Pangalawa, why is law considered just? Is it always just? Pangatlo, why is it obligatory? And what happens if people stop following or observing it? Pangapat, who promulgates or who passes these laws? And are there exceptions? And at ang, ang panglima, why is it for the common observance and benefit? And for whom is the law for? Kaya, isa-isahin natin. So, why is law a rule of conduct? Well, the law is a rule of conduct because it sets certain standards or certain uh, ways of doing things. Now, even if we have uh, learned or we have acquired certain habits or certain behaviors, ang batas meron pa talagang isinasaad at meron pa sinasabi sa atin kung paano tayo kumilos, kung paano tayo umasal. So that's why it's called a rule of conduct. But then, do we really need these rules of conduct? Well, the answer is yes. Because human nature, our natural state, is, of course, me, myself and I. Laging ako na una. Laging me first. And this is because we are vested with that uh, survival instinct. We are vested with that uh, need to, to, to please and to be pleased. So imagine if every person does what he was born to do or to be, and that is to search for meaning and to be uh, self-gratifying. Ang gulo-gulo na nun. So in other words, the natural state of human beings is chaos, disorder. And here comes law. Law sets the rules of conduct that people in a civilized society must observe. And without this law, then you can expect chaos and disorder. Now, uh, if a certain rule of conduct is created or is mandated by law, what is that for? I mean, is it supposed to be just to require obedience? Para lang ba maging, uh, let's say, mas uh, masunurin tayo? No. This rule of conduct has a purpose. And the purpose is generally for the betterment or for the general welfare. And so, hindi ibig sabihin na merong kang dapat gawin or merong pinapagawa sa'yo it's not just for the purpose of you know, forcing you to do something without any benefit. Ang batas, merong purpose yan. And the purpose is determined from the specific law. 
may mga batas para sa property, may batas para sa mga mag-asawa, may batas para sa uh, ekonomiya, sa business. So, in other words, a rule of conduct is meant to achieve a purpose. Now, some purposes are general, others are specific. So, we have civil law and the purpose is very general. And this is to govern or regulate the relations of private persons. And then we have political law, the purpose of which is to regulate the relations between the state and the person or the citizen. At sya, primarily the time criminal law. And that is to define and punish crimes. But there are also specific purposes or laws which have specific purposes. For example, the law on adoption. Meron tayo law on uh, doing business, law on corporations. So there are rules of conduct related to this specific purpose. Yeah, so I hope mali now. Now the next question na binagit natin kanina is is law just and is it always just? Ano nga ba ibig sabihin ng just? Ay ibig sabihin ng just ay fair. Well, in fact, uh, the 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 very popular definition of justice is to give everyone his due. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yan, just or justice doesn't mean equality. It doesn't mean universality or uniformity. So, the purpose of the law, or at least the, the presumed nature of the law, is that it is just. It is fair. So, kaya in looking at the law, or in trying to understand the law, it's not on the basis of is it being uh, uh, drafted or is it being created to be applied to all and is its purpose for the purp you know uh, applicable to all is it for the betterment of all hindi hindi pwedeng parehas para sa lahat no uh, there will always be differences there are no two persons who are alike no um kung ano ka you are unique kung ano ko i'm unique so every person is unique but there are common similarities <laughs> uh, common uh, similarities but there are similarities or there are uh, fundamental equality ng mga tao ng mga bagay ng mga transaction and so the law will apply to these commonalities or these uh, similarities no? and if there are differences, these differences do not negate or do not prevent the just nature of the law. Kaya kung halimbawa, meron tayong mga batas about uh, promotions or meron tayong batas about uh, uh, opportunities at work or in business, some people may not be able to get that opportunity not because it's not available to them but because they do not meet the criteria so ibig sabihin every person may have that chance or opportunity or even yeah call it right but the thing is meron pang mga criteria na dapat i-meet and so when you do not meet that criteria then sorry ka na lang okay because someone else is more deserving okay so that's an example of being just now, doon naman tayo sa mga uh, restrictions. Meron iba na karamdam na bakit ganun? Ako, hindi ako, hindi ako pinapayagang gawin to, pero siya pinapayagang gawin yun. We have to look at the intent or the wisdom of the law. Para kanino ba yung batas? Is it for everybody? Or is it for a class or a sector? that for the longest time nakaranas na injustice kaya ginagawa ng paraan ng batas para maiayos or ma-alleviate yung kanilang sitwasyon and this is in the case of farmers in the case of daily wage earners in the case of women no throughout history they have had difficult lives too. they have had difficult experiences so kaya naisip ng batas na Uy, kailangan natin i-equal ang playing field. Kailangan natin i-alleviate ang kanilang sitwasyon so that they can more or less have a, a good fighting chance no, in life, in work, in this world. So kaya 
yung mga hindi nakakaranas ng ganong mga benepisyo, sometimes they feel na they were deprived. But actually, come to think of it, these laws, especially the social justice, social legislations, these laws were made in answer to the years that they were deprived of the things that many of you, that many of us have, in, have been enjoying. Tulad ng education, diba? tulad ng uh, uh, access to the good things in life, the better things in life. Kaya sila naman yung binibigyan. So, isa din yan sa halimbawa ng bakit law is just. Now, even if sometimes the law is perceived to be excessive, ibig sabihin may pagmamalabis, especially doon sa interpretation at saka enforcement or implementation, we should not lose sight of the fact that maybe that's not the problem of the law. Maybe the problem is in the interpretation or in the implementation. And all this, labas na yan doon sa batas. Kaya for us to be able to think rationally about our laws in the Philippines, dapat isipin natin ang intent o ang wisdom ng batas and not how it is perceived and not how it is implemented. Alright, so ngayon yung pangatlo naman is why is it obligatory and what happens if people stop observing or following it. Ang ibig sabihin na obligatory ay it's mandatory or it's it is compulsory. Ibig sabihin hindi siya simpleng uh, invitation para sundin mo. Okay? It's not directory. It's not up to you whether to comply or not. Because inherently, law should be obligatory. Kahit na simpleng batas yan, like uh, traffic rules, or simpleng uh, uh, beneficyo yan na sometimes may be uh, outdated okay hindi ibig sabihin hindi mo siya susundin no so halimbawa pag sinabi mo 13th month pay ayan so on 13th month pay kahit na luma na yan kahit na sometimes negligible because mas marami ka pang natatanggap na beneficyo mas marami pang bonuses ang binibigay ng kumpanya dapat ibigay mo pa rin now yung sinabi ko kayo na halimbawa traffic rules and, and regulations napaka simpleng batas napaka uh, kumbaga trivial compared naman sa ibang mga batas na you know involving money, involving property etc. but still meron siyang role in society and that is to make sure that we are safe out there on the road and that we can uh, go to our work or to our destination as soon or as fast as possible. So, it's both necessity and convenience. So, kailangan mong sundin yon. Kailangan natin sundin because lahat ng batas natin ay merong role na ginagampanan. It's like pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. So, ganun ang dapat nating approach or ang pagtingin natin sa mga batas. They are mandatory because they serve a purpose okay. now does the law cease to be obligatory when sometimes people do not you know uh, imbibe in them yung attitude na pagsunod ibig sabihin yung may mga tao na they, they, they violate these laws with impunity ibig sabihin na impunity yung bang walang takot na maparusahan sila na hindi ko sila sinisisi kasi sometimes kaya sila nagkakaganon dahil hindi naman sila hinuhuli or walang enforcement no? so ibig sabihin yung attitude ng tao when they just brush aside the law and not fearing punishment and the fact that we have a very weak law enforcement of some laws that doesn't negate or that doesn't reduce the obligatory nature of laws kasi kung hindi siya obligatory, kung hindi siya mandatory, ay huwag na lang tayong gumawa ng batas, di ba? But take note, meron ding mga ibang ipinapasa na they may not be as obligatory as laws. Ito yung mga resolutions. Ito yung mga proclamations. No? Na sometimes they only express um, the sentiment. They only express a policy. But just the same, they ought to be respected. But with respect to laws, 
ay iba naman yon no hindi yon merely sentiment hindi yon merely uh, a proclamation but they are laws to be followed now yung sinasabi nating laws to be followed hindi lang po yan exclusively mga batas na gawa ng kongreso kasama din po diyan ang mga ordinansa ng mga bayan lungsod at saka ng mga lalawigan okay so next would be at related doon sa mga uh, ibang klaseng batas no sino ang gumagawa or who is the legitimate authority who promulgates these laws well as a rule it's congress of the philippines composed of two houses we have the upper house which is the senate of the philippines and the lower house which is the house of representatives nasa konstitusyon yan na sila or ang kongreso ang may karapatang pumasa ng batas that's why together the house of representatives and the senate they compose the legislative branch now meron din tayong ibang branches yung executive branch at saka judicial branch na executive branch ay pinamumunuan ng ating pangulo the president of the philippines who is assisted by the different executive departments Now, meron din mga agencies, meron din mga GOCCs or government-owned and controlled corporations. All of these okay, are under the office of the president or the supervision and control of the president. So, kaya sila under the executive branch. The judicial branch, on the other hand, ay uh, pinamumunuan, of course, by the Supreme Court and all the courts under it. So, ano ba ang tungkulin ng legislative branch? Ang tungkulin nito ay magpasa ng batas to pass laws or to enact laws. On the other hand, the executive branch, its duty is to execute or implement the laws. And lastly, the judicial branch, its duty is to interpret or apply the laws. So, sino ba dito sa tatlong to ang merong power to promulgate laws? Well, again, as I've said, it's Congress of the Philippines traditionally, but the executive branch, you know, say the president, had in the past the power to pass laws. Panahon ni President Ferdinand E. Marcos, uh, he passed presidential decrees, what we call PDs, and these presidential decrees... Um, were part of the legal system napakaraming mga magagandang presidential decrees katulad ng presidential decree number 1529 or the property registration decree okay samantala uh, nung panahon naman ni Cory Aquino nagkaroon din ng mga proclamations or mga executive orders na ipinasa si Pangulong Cory Aquino under the Freedom Constitution now meron ding mga ipinapasa yung executive branch and This is consistent with its power and duty to implement or to execute the laws. At ang binabanggit ko ay yung mga administrative rules and regulations. These administrative rules and regulations apply or implement uh, the mandate of the law. At ang mga batas na yan ay merong isinasaad at tinuturong mga ahensya na mamumuno or mag apply ng batas na yan. So, kaya gagawa sila ng implementing rules and regulations. So, ang tanong, mga batas din ba ang mga ito? Yes, they are laws. Especially when they affect the general public. So, kung ikaw halimbawa, meron kang transaction sa BIR, may mga rules and regulations ang BIR na masasabi nating batas. No? Na kasi dahil they affect all taxpayers. Hindi man yun ipinasa ng, um, ng kongreso but are administrative issuances of BIR pero batas pa rin yun. They have the same effect as laws. Okay, ang pangatlo ay yung mga desisyon ng Supreme Court at saka desisyon ng mga lower courts. Because they interpret the laws, these judicial decisions are considered part of the law of the land. But take note, hindi lahat ng desisyon ay masasabing law of the land. Instead, only decisions of the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court has the last or ultimate power to decide or to interpret the law. Kung meron mang mga desisyon ng lower courts interpreting the law, ay malamang ito ay interpretasyon na ng Supreme Court at inuulit lamang ng lower courts. Now, kung may bagong question or novel question and the court, this lower court is constrained to make an interpretation of the law that interpretation is only temporary or provisional kasi pwede pa itong i-reverse ng Supreme Court because ang may last say dyan ay ang Supreme Court okay so 
Ngayon, yung mga decisions ng Supreme Court na sinabi kung they are part of the law of the land, dapat sundin din natin. No? They are also as obligatory as the laws passed by Congress or laws that are uh, passed or enacted uh, by administrative agencies as implementing rules and regulations or administrative rules. Ayan. Ngayon yung mga ordinansa naman, ito ay gawa ng mga local legislative uh, bodies. So may mga sanggunian sa bayan, sa, sa city, at saka sa lalawigan. They also have the same powers or the same nature and effect as uh, the statutes or the laws passed by Congress. Dahil dito sa Pilipinas, we have local autonomy. And by local autonomy, the powers in the central or national government, they're also exercised and are devolved. Ibig sabi, ibinaba sa mga local government units. Ayan, so sila po ang mga legitimate authority sa pagpasa ng batas. Now, lastly is, is law really for common observance and benefit? Bakit parang hindi ko naramdaman? Diba? I'm sure you have asked that question many times. Now, hindi naman sinasabi that every person should be able to benefit from the law. Kasi tulad na sinasabi ko kanina, magkaiba tayo. Iba-iba ang ating mga interests, iba-iba ang ating mga concerns. At dahil iba-iba ang ating mga concerns at interests, may mga batas talagang walang relevance sa atin. Pero dun sa mga may relevance, ibig sabihin, kumbaga apektado nung batas na yon doon nila mararamdaman yung benefit but just the same hindi ibig sabihin hindi mo nararamdaman hindi mo susundin or hindi mo igagalang yung batas we have to respect and observe these laws because they are meant to benefit a person certain persons and the effect of that is meron tayong general feeling of betterment or goodness o tinatawag natin welfare kaya nga tawag dyan ay general welfare ayan so kaya wag natin tingnan ang batas na pa isa-isa sa halip ay tingnan natin ang batas sa kabuuan and all these laws form part of a general jigsaw puzzle and if they are are placed on each side or side by side then you will see the greater picture and that is the common or the general welfare. These are some of the principles that apply to laws. Okay, so number one, there are two types of laws. We have substantive law and procedural law. Substantive law is the law that creates rights and obligations. So, kung may, may uh, nire-recognize na karapatan, sigurado that's a substantive law. Okay? Samantala, procedural law is a law that provides for the procedure for the enforcement of these rights and obligations. So kung may batas na nagsasaad ng steps o paraan para ma-avail mo yung rights na yun, procedural law yan. So halimbawa, sa labor code, diba, that substantive law, ang procedural law naman yan ay yung mga implementing rules and regulations. So kung ikaw ay halimbawa empleyado na dismiss ka, so, anong gagawin mo? So, meron tayong mga rules and regulations ng DOLE, ng NCMB, at saka ng NLRC. At uh, doon, sa pamagitan ng mga office na yun, at pag nasunod mo yung mga proseso at yung mga steps, then you will be able to enforce your rights and obligations. Okay, another important principle is effectivity of laws. Laws must be published before they become effective. So, kailangan talagang may ilathala siya sa official gazette at sa newspaper of general circulation. Pag hindi na ilathala ang isang batas, wala pong visa ang batas. At related dyan ay yung pangatlong prinsipyo. And that principle is, ignorantia lehis non excusat. Ignorance of the law does not excuse anyone. Or ignorance of the law excuses no one. Okay? Ibig sabihin, pag na-publish na ng ng kongreso yung uh, batas no? it has already served or complied with its duty of publication and uh, the law is now effective and so if the law is effective it becomes now the duty or obligation of a citizen 
to know what these laws are. So, hindi excuse yung, ay, hindi ko alam. Ay, sorry, hindi ako na-inform. Ay, may ganun pala. Hindi po excuse yun. But take note that good faith or mistake may be a ground to reduce or mitigate the liability. Siyempre, may awa din ang batas. Remember, law is just. Okay? Even though we say, duralex sedlex or the law may be harsh but it is the law but underlying that is that law and justice go together so kaya kung may batas na na-violate ka or nalabag ka pero in good faith ka wala kang alam tungkol sa batas at wala ka namang intensyon na suwayin or uh, labagin ang ang batas if only you knew di ba then the courts can mitigate the liability and also mitigate the penalty pwedeng yung minimum penalty na lang ang ipataw ayan but remember ignorance of the law is no one pa rin ang principle so kung may chance kayo actually this is not an invitation to you no to read the law but rather it should be our obligation to know the law para we will not get in trouble mahirap na yung alam mo magkaka problema tayo sa batas okay so the fourth principle about laws is that laws are prospective ibig sabihin they look into the future ibig sabihin laws apply to present and future situations but never to the past ibig sabihin mag move on na tayo sa past kaya hindi pwede ang batas ngayon ay ipataw mo sa isang pangyayari in the past okay. but take note that there are exceptions uh, some of the exceptions to the prospecti prospectivity of laws are Number one, pag procedural yung batas Ibig sabihin, if it involves court procedure, processes to enforce a substantive right Okay, so pwede mo i-apply yan to pending or past cases na hindi pa na de decidean Okay, now another um, uh, exception is that when the law is curative Ibig sabihin, word, ang root word ay cure. Ibig sabihin, meron siyang gustong gamutin in the past. So, if there is a situation or a law or a policy that was found to be harsh or oppressive, then this law na ngayon lang ipinasa, pwede i-apply yan sa nakaraan para magamot o masolusyonan o maremedyohan yung obviously ay unfair situation. Okay, at ang pangatlo uh, na exception doon sa prospectivity ng batas ay yung criminal laws. If the criminal laws are favorable to the accused. Ibig sabihin kung makakatulong ito para mabawasan yung kanyang penalty or makakatulong ito para mapawalang sala ang isang akusado, pwede nating i-apply sa sitwasyon niya. Ayan. Okay, now, ang kasunod na prinsipyo na gusto ko i-discuss ay mandatory and prohibitory laws. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay anything that is done in violation of mandatory or prohibitory laws shall be void. Ito ay patungkol doon sa mga kontrata, mga arrangements na ginagawa ng mga tao pursuant to their freedom to contract. Ngayon, akala nila dahil may freedom to contract sila, they can stipulate on on such terms and conditions that are convenient and mutually beneficial to each other ay okay na hindi po po pwede yun because these acts cannot be tolerated importante pa rin na we follow mandatory and prohibitory laws because mandatory laws ay ibig sabihin nun ay there is something to be done or there is something that must be done and any violation thereof is of course void sa prohibitory laws naman ibig sabihin may ipinagbabawal tapos yung ginawa mo ay labag doon ginawa mo yung ipinagbabawal ay void naman yun bigyan ko kayo ng halimbawa let's say a foreigner uh, entered into a trust agreement with a Filipino binigyan niya ng pera yung Filipino para bumili ng lupa dito sa Pilipinas so nakarehistro ngayon doon sa Pilipino Pero may trust agreement sila. Ang sinasabi sa trust agreement, nakapangalan lang sa'yo, Mr. Filipino, pero ako ang may karapatan na mag-enjoy dyan sa property na yan. Ako ang magiging uh, hari. Kumbaga, 
ako ay magka-astar na bilang may-ari, no? Pangalan lang sa iyo, papel lang sa iyo, but I will enjoy all attributes or incidents of ownership. In fact, kung gusto mong ibenta yan, kailangan ko munang magbigay ng consent. Ayan. So, this is an act in violation of mandatory and prohibitory laws. Why? Because it indirectly violates the constitutional provision against foreign ownership of lands. Isa pang halimbawa ay yung mga ginagawa ng mga Pilipino pag lumipat or bumunta sa ibang bansa. No? Halimbawa, nag-asawa dito sa Pilipinas, pareha silang Pilipino, tapos pumunta sa Amerika, doon sila nag-divorce. Ngayon, umuwi sa Pilipinas, nag-asawa ulit. Yung divorce sa Amerika, kahit recognized yun doon, hindi po marirecognize dito sa Pilipinas dahil ayon sa Article 1 of the Family Code, marriage is a social contract of permanent union between a man and a woman. At sinasabi rin ng batas na it is inviolable. Ayan. So yun po yung dalawang halimbawa ng mga acts that are in violation of mandatory and prohibitory laws. Kaya they are void. Okay? They can never be validated because we have a mandatory or prohibitory law that we must observe. Okay. At ang, sumusun ang susunod naman ay ang repeal and non-observance of the law. Okay. Repeal is the act of Congress to supersede. Okay. Ibig sabihin to uh, replace no an old law although hindi na ibig sabihin na itong bagong batas ay ito na yon kumbaga sasapawan niya yung unang batas kasi meron namang mga batas talagang ipinasa lang para mapawalang bisa yung naunang batas okay so ang epekto ng repeal ay wala nang bisa yung unang batas no at tuloy si Rabi ko pwedeng ang papalit doon ay itong pangalawang batas now meron pa tayong isang proseso kung saan ang isang batas ay nawawala ng visa and this is through the power of the Supreme Court to declare a law unconstitutional it has the same effect as repeal because when the Supreme Court says or rules that the law is unconstitutional and in effect it is against the Constitution then mapapawalang visa na yung batas na yun now bakit sinasabi unconstitutional ang batas na yan? dahil in the hierarchy of laws in the Philippines Unang-una dyan ang constitution or ang saligang batas Susunod dyan ay yung mga statutes At susunod dyan yung mga implementing rules and regulations no? So, una-una talaga ang constitution And everything else must be consistent with the constitution So, if the law is inconsistent with the constitution Then it will be struck down Okay, pinakahuli naman ay yung non-observance of the law Ito yung sasabi, okay, na nung binabanggit ko yung obligatoriness. The non-observance of the law for a long period of time does not negate the effectivity of the law. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya napapawalang bisa ang batas. Akalain nyo may mga batas pa na sobrang luma, na sobrang tanda na, na hanggang ngayon ay applicable pa rin. Tulad ng mga batas on gambling, no? tulad ng batas on uh, paninira ng ng mga ng coins, ng mga barya o yung mga paper paper bills no ng ng ating uh, Philippine peso. So these are all old laws and still they are valid. They are still good law at dapat pa rin nating sundin. Ayan. So I hope uh, you learned something from this video and uh laing nating iisipin no na ang batas ay para sa atin. And so we must always think that when a law is passed or that when we are required to comply with the law, lagi natin tatandaan na para sa atin yun, para sa ikabubuti natin yun. Now, it is something else, of course, when the law may be questioned no? for being unconstitutional, for being oppressive, or maybe the law enforcement is you know, objectionable. Merong, merong irregularity doon. Yung mga bagay na yun, yun pwede natin i-question. Pero, yung batas or having a law-centered uh, civilization or society, that we should not doubt. Okay? So, yun na lang po muna. I will end it here. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up.
if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please consider subscribing and click that notification bell so that you will be alerted when I upload a new video you will definitely see another video next week and so until then laging tatandaan isip ay buksan alamin ang batas bye guys